All right, Ms. Skid, we're going to get started. Um, the floor is all yours for this for the Family Connections report. And then we're going to our guest speaker. Okay. Well, one of the things that I wanted to mention to you is that we our website for Carroll County Youth Mental Health Task Force is revamped. Just go and check it out um, afterwards. And um, Parents Cafe will be launched in September. We have a parent that has been certified. And so we will start doing that. And this week, we are going to put all the things together. And I will let you know, everybody. So if you have a parent that has a child that has experienced mental health or they want to learn more about mental health, uh, that will be the, the, the Parents Cafe. And uh, September is National Suicide Prevention Month, so we are hosting uh, QPRs in Spanish and English, and hopefully uh, Youth Mental Health First Aid in English, if we can get 30 people to register. Um, on October 29th is Out of the Darkness West Georgia Walk, um, the Christmas Parade on December 2nd. Um, we are asking our collaborative if everybody wants to come together and have a float. Since many of our agencies do not have a float on, on its own, it will send a message in our community that we're all working together. And so, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm envisioning every single person that uh, that is coming in. Um, that's seeing us with our with our logos, seeing that the collaborative is working together for education for the for our students, for our youth, for our community in general. So I don't know. I put that idea in 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 you. So if you want, I I'm an optimistic, so I'm already I already have reserved um a third uh float for us, one for Carroll County Family Connection and two for our stand clubs in the schools. So just be thinking about that. Um, but we will need um, a group of people that is willing to do that. Uh, as you know, we have many agencies that are not big enough that to have a whole float. And so the idea of the collaborative float is that we are all together on that one. Um, and save the date for August 3rd. I know that I am announcing it very early, but we already reserved it. It's a Tabernacle Baptist Church. We had a, our first health, wellness, and resources fair on last July 15th. Uh, August was already taken. So um, it was a success in the aspect that we had over 30 people, um, agencies registered. So that's that was great uh we had about 22 to, that came and that's an amazing thing and we had fun with tanner uh doing um um the tai chi and the demonstrations and everybody have being there and our partnership with dph uh, department of public health district four is great and uh, we need to continue that partnership and including of course our partnership with mercer that it is the health um equity navigator program and they're amazing and so uh we have we already um um a youth camp with them and we think if linda is here lydia lydia no lydia lydia i'm sorry lydia will be i think that we had about 30 kids i'm not sure right now but it was a successful uh youth camp and so we want to continue with that collaboration and just so save the day, August 3rd. And if you know anybody that is doing back to school um, events, please tell them to use the August 3rd. That, that is part of our collaborative effort that we all support each other with the events that we have. And, and the vision of the resources fair is, uh, is that all of us can be together. Um, and that's it for me. Uh, I am going to be sending all the links to you because you know that we have a, a folder where all we are, we put all of our events, we have our e-newsletter. And so I think that that's it from me. All right. Thank you, Ms. Gila. Um, reminder, please sign in the chat if you haven't already. Um, we've got 26 people on and only 10 people signed in. So and now we'll move forward with our meeting today.
Um, our guest speaker today is Miss Carol Dotson from Intelligy, and we're talking about the connector. So, Miss Dotson, the floor is all yours. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for Gila for inviting me to come talk about the project that we are calling the connector. So maybe some of you have seen some updates or imp information. We've been working on this project since January of this year. It was sponsored in, in start with um, by the Community Foundation of West Georgia. So I'll introduce myself. My name is Carol Cantori Dotson, and I come from an organization that does process improvement and operation improvement in um, social service environment. So uh, we're 26 years in business. We've worked extensively in child welfare services, adult protective services. We've done kind of big scale food stamps, Medicare, um, process design and customer service improvement. And then more recently, um, we, and we continue to do that work. We also started working with the city of Atlanta and the Atlanta COC in housing and homeless service programs. And in Atlanta, helped pilot, and we're in the middle of piloting a um, rent utility mortgage relief collaborative with nonprofits um, in the city of Atlanta and the surrounding areas. And it was from that work that we were introduced to the Community Foundation of West Georgia and came in and did a, a project in your communities to try to identify a way to work, have these small nonprofits that are doing really important work come together to make the experience for the, the individual seeking help, those neighbors in need, the individual seeking help, make that experience easier, a little bit more straightforward, and in the end, more administratively um, uh, safe or um, efficient for the nonprofits that are trying to provide this service. So fast forward to today, and Gila's a, a big part of it with Family Connection, we are about a month away from piloting a um, initial step in the improvement of this client experience through a collaboration of nonprofits coming together to um, identify the, an individual that has a need, what the need is, and try to make the connections for them to the organizations that provide that support. So um, I'm going to minimize. Gila, do you have those screens shared yet? You do? Oh, gosh. Okay. Let me try to find it. So thank you. Uh, she is we're kind of doing a little tag team here because I'm actually in the middle of traveling to another project, but thank you for doing that. So let, we just want to show you a little bit about the pilot, give you an understanding of what we're attempting to do, what the long-term solution looks like. And then as different agencies, I'm kind of watching everybody check in. You, if you are, you know, you may be referring parties to this. You may look at yourself and say, Hey, at, there's times that we provide these kind of services Maybe we want to be a, a part of the connector so that when someone presents with that need, I, you know, maybe we raise our hands and we're able to take some of that need as well. So keep that, keep your different hats on and potentially how, um, you know, this may be a, a part of the work that you do at minimum, making sure you have an opportunity to direct families to this avenue of identifying the need they have and trying to making a match with service agencies in your area. So we'll just kind of go through this. Um, I'm showing you our implementation plan. Yeah, so just kind of give you a status of what we're piloting, we'll talk about our long-term technology solution that we're building, and then some of the other ideas that we had. So you can go to the next slide, I'll talk about the timeline. So we started this process um, from the timeline back in January, but our implementation has really started um, in June. We created some proposals. We actually have a steering committee. So also if anybody's interested, and hearing about this on a monthly basis, they can join the steering committee. Um, originally, we set out to do, we call it a collaborative call handling. We thought, and we uncovered from the, the assessment that we did, that there's really no easy place for someone that's seeking help to make a phone call and get some information. Where do I start? Who should I be talking to? How do I get that started? Oh, Gila, you can go back to the timeline. Yeah, thanks. Um, so we, you can say here. So we thought about, we, we put a proposal out there for what would collaborative call handling look like. We drafted a common application and we're gonna show you that. We actually are also working towards a, a technology solution. So the business requirements were completed. And another initiative that the, the connector is working on is, is there a long-term 
space, a physical space in one of our communities that would be like a one-stop shop when for individuals that are seeking multiple levels of service that they could come together and meet with service providers, meet with agencies, maybe meet with case managers. So we have a couple of long-term proposals out there. And what we're ready to talk about today is what we're ready to pilot, which is our common application and that that coordinated service. So we're now we're in August, we're identifying budgets, we're getting partners um, signed up that are gonna participate and we're working through this implementation. So in September, and we'll, we'll show you what this means, we're launching what we kind of internally call a common application, which is that one location that anybody that needs help is telling us a little bit about themselves, telling us a little bit about their need, a little bit about why they, you know, how they got here. And then we'll start that process of matching them with nonprofits that provide that service. We're also building this future technology solution. So what we're going to show you today is a manual pilot of what will eventually be automated. So it's kind of ex exciting and eventually is really like January of this year. So let's kind of, we'll go on and we'll kind of just chip away at it and show you a little bit of that information. Um, we have, you know, this is everything that we're our checklist of what we have to have ready to make this a full implementation. So we already have the application ready. We'll show you that we already have landing pages, what it'll, what it'll look like to, you know, to present this to the public. And we already have um, our nonprofits kind of signing up. And then we have some other work to do. So the application in a screenshot way is here. What you guys can do, and Gila can send this out later, you're welcome to click on that link. And that'll actually bring you to our, you know, don't fill it out for anybody. It's not live. You're not going to get matched to any service provider. But if you are interested in the way that we're bringing individuals through requesting this support, you can click on that link and you can get to an applica the application. I just put a little screenshot in here. What we set out to do with this application is make it easy. We tried to use easy to understand language. We tried to only ask questions that we absolutely needed answers to in order to match them to someone that could help them. Um, we, you know, we really did a lot of research around what it, how the, the burden of someone seeking help, the crisis that they may be in, the um, literacy level, potential literacy level, the technology implications and barriers that individuals have. So we tried to make it, we're only asking because we we really need this information to find you someone that potentially can help you. So if you click on that later, you'll kind of walk through the application. On this page here, you're seeing what we will eventually talk when we communicate this out to the public. This will be on Family Connection website. It'll be on some of our nonprofits. They'll they'll have this on their website instead of their existing, you know, access points. So this is what we call a landing page. But what we'll talk about is: Are you in need of housing, utility, food? complete this application. We'll do the best we can to match you with a nonprofit. We're working together to make this happen. It's, we're not guaranteeing that we can help everybody, but we're trying to make this process a little easier for you. So that's kind of the gist of what we have here. And then we also give them some other phone numbers because we are not domestic violence. We are not sexual assault. We are not mental health crisis or medical emergency. Okay. That's kind of an example of what it'll look like when someone finds it. We have a, um, intern that's going to help us in this manual pilot phase. And this is what they'll be doing. We're excited about the intern that uh, West Georgia is providing us. And that's actually going to, she's going to live at Family Connection. She's going to be, um, Gila's going to do her oversight, but that intern will be in, with, in, in a combination with us, will be doing that process of receiving the applications and trying to find the nonprofits that have signed up to take applications. Eventually, that manual process will be will be replaced by the technology that comes to life in January. Okay, we'll go next. Um, so right now the pilot agency so is our uh, obviously Family Connection. St. Margaret's is a big participant in this. THS Emergency Shelter Shelter is a really big participant in this process. Midway um, Lifeline Mission from a food representative is a big part of this planning process in open hands. We also are, um, we recognize these other agencies, we're informing them, bringing them up to speed, and they are likely to kind of join in on the agencies that are willing to take applications from this 
process or at minimum refer people to the process. So on the right hand side, you see like a flyer that we have that's explaining a little bit about what's going to happen here where local nonprofits are working together to help more people to create a common application, make it easier for people not to have to spend their day calling around and duplicating their effort. Ask one time and we'll connect you to the people that have the available resources. And um, it also gives us as a community a way to quantify the need in our community and quantify it by types of need and by city and by location within the county, but also just who's out there seeking help and can we quantify it as a community? Are we meeting that need? And as a community, can we come together and maybe get identify different resources to meet the needs that are going unmet? All with reducing the burden of the individual in crisis. So that's a little bit of a flyer that we're using to communicate with our, our agency partners. Um, what, what the page, agency partners, so if you are out there and you actually have funding for rent utility, um, housing, but also we are looking for transportation support. There's a lot of food need. If you're if you're recognizing that you're an agency that might want to be a part of this, what it means to be a pilot agency is just one time a week you're willing to tell us, yes, send me people. No, I can't take anything this week. That literally, if that's your commitment, and then you're also committing to when you take an application that comes in through the common application you're willing to um, get to them within five days. So we just, we don't want anybody to take applications where we could have maybe matched them with someone else. And then you, you, you're, you know, you get busy and you sit on it. So we're just looking for a five day commitment from a service level agreement. And I saw a chat question come up. Is this going to go across the whole state of Georgia? Just so you know, we are, this pilot is focusing on the three counties in West, the West Georgia three counties, because that's who's really sponsoring it. And those are the service providers that are coming together to do it. I think this model, it should be expanded. It should be, which should catch like fire and we should keep on growing the network because we're asking, where do you live? What zip code, what city, what part of the county? So any service providers that have this kind of service to offer, you know, we could match them with people that are coming in with those zip codes easily, very, very easily. And it's very similar to what we're doing in Atlanta. And then in Atlanta also, her uh, the counties are Heard, Harrelson, and um, Carroll County are sponsoring this. So the three counties of that are under the Community Foundation of West Georgia. So anyway, great. So, that, so it's not a big ask for these really busy volunteer-based nonprofits. Just tell us one time a week and we otherwise take the burden off you. Because right now these nonprofits get phone calls all day and they get applications online and they get text messages. In theory, all of that can go away and we can funnel to them individuals that are seeking help. And we know that it's not a duplication of one of their, you know, someone across the city who's also trying to provide this help. So, and we can, I mean, we'd love, to, we'd love to talk about it. We can talk about it anytime um, afterwards. And yeah, you can definitely get a copy of it. Gila can send it out. All right, so the next page is, you know, if you, many of you guys are in the position where you're always thinking about the end in mind. What do we get from this from a reporting perspective? How do we learn more about the needs in our community? So if obviously by working together, by making this a central location, who we're serving, what they're, what services we're providing, what money did the communities are spending, is there something to be learned about household size, race, ethnicity, or other community defining factors? Um, are there seasonal trends in need? Are there city and county trends, um, we, the, the needs that were the crisis that individuals find them in, we need, we don't know enough about, we know that we have nonprofits that are just helping people everywhere they can. But as a community, as, as multiple communities, we really can't define that and say, are we meeting that need? Is there certain pockets of need that we, we, if, you know, someone just needed to tell some of our church partners, uh, all we need is this. If there's people asking and we don't have any place to send them. So that information, I think is, we don't even know. It's the sky's the limit about the information that we actually can gain from this process as well. And, and like I said, who we're unable to help and what the impacts of not helping them are. So we're, we're hoping a lot of the data is, you know, really meaningful and continues to grow where individual nonprofit agencies spend their time and, and money as well. The next slide. So we don't have to go over this, but in the slide set, you'll 
we, we just wanted to share with you a little bit about the language that we're using. So of course, as our implementation plan, we have to think through everything. What do they get when they're done filling out the application? What information do they get? Do they have a way of asking questions? Um, what happens if we don't have a match? Because you know the need is sometimes surpasses the the dollars that are available in these organizations. So we're really trying to be very intentional about the language we use. About we're not really promising anything, but we are trying to make it easier. Because really, at the end of the day. We didn't promise anything, nor are any of these community partners promising anything. And we're just trying to make it so that individual that's seeking help gets better information quicker. So they are not spending days where they could be, you know, at work or taking care of their families. We're not, they're not spending days calling around and driving around and trying to make these connection points that we're really making that process more humane and easier for them. And, and the, the client experience is my expertise. I came in looking with the client in mind. Um, so that we could make sure that we are, have that in mind as we're also trying to think about these, the nonprofits that are trying to provide this help and their overtaxed situations. They just, you know, volunteers and they're so busy and they have so much, so many phone calls and so many requests. So we try to, we're trying to make everybody's life a little bit better from both ends of this process. Gil, I don't remember what you had on. So, so yeah, we are, we are um, in that pilot phase of the process, which is the application and the matching. But what we're all really looking forward to is the technology solution that's a huge part of this process that is slated for basically for January. So what we've been doing kind of simultaneously is we've been thinking about the process and the client experience and how we're making it from the outside looking in accessible. Now we're also on the other side saying, what does it mean for all of these connected nonprofits to have a common portal of information? So suddenly as a community, we know Carol Dotson has asked for some rent assistance, but she's also asking for job, um, job skill development. So we now know Carol Dotson made this help. We know that THS provided um, two nights in a nights in a hotel. We noted this. We know that St. Margaret's helped them with moving and helped me with moving expense. And we know that I'm connected to the career center at Goodwill. I now know that about this individual who's asked for this help inside this portal. So what the technology that's underway that the Community Foundation of West Georgia's board is making a decision. They've actually done an RFP. They have vendors that have that have presented. They're making a decision um, at the board level, I think today actually, about which vendor they're going with and that build will start. So in January, all of these nonprofits that are coming together will then have that portal access to see who's asking for help, to see what help they've received in the past, to learn a little bit about the, the community members and the neighbors that we're trying to help so that we all work better together, more intelligently, more efficiently. So that's really exciting process today. I think is really, the, I think it is the decision of tomorrow and they'll start the build and we are, you know, we're right here in the selecting and contracting. Of course, the Community Foundation of West Georgia is always um, trying to seek the money that's gonna pay for the technology build, but I think they have that under underway and that'll be the process that we get going with. So that's where we are with the technology. And then I mentioned just really quickly at the very beginning that the third component of this big project that we started in January is looking for a potential physical resource hub location. So I, I'm not going to really talk, share too much about it. I think Gila, probably in October, you guys could talk about at your meeting or November, you could tell a lot more about it, but because there's a lot of really exciting things happening, but it's, they're kind of keeping it under the rug right now while they figure out. Um, some potential really exciting locations. And and then what we'll work through is the resources available. So imagine you guys are all from different organizations. Imagine a, a, a coming together place where every second Tuesday of the month, your organization has office space and office hours at this central location, a way for you to connect to the community without being tied to you know your own physical locations or it's a kind of like a one to many individuals in our community that are seeking services or need some support and help. They come one place and they, you know, they get access to in a more efficient way resources, but also meeting rooms and case management office space and 
clothing closet, the churches that have clothing closet, imagine using this space for, you know, clothes, back to school clothing, back to school haircuts. There's just a lot of things that we thought that a resource hub could do in communicating facility with, um, with people. So thank you for taking a little bit of time. Absolutely, we can share this slide. You please click through the application. It is just a, it's just a pilot. Nothing that actually happens is gonna go anywhere. So do not share that with any clients right yet. Gila will let um, make a big announcement when it's available for, um, you know, for actually live piloting and clients. So we'll let you know that. And we'd love to hear any questions or feedback you have um, from anything that you saw today or any of the things that you check out afterwards. And one of the things that we want to be able to do today is to uh, introduce you to Evie. She's going to be um, um, uh, with us. Hi, Evie. Can you Hi. introduce yourself uh, right now? That way everybody knows you. Um, hi, I'm Evie. Uh, I just graduated from the University of West Georgia, um, and I'm entering into a master's in public administration program. And so I'm just going to be kind of the air traffic control middleman person for um, all the applications and stuff right now. And I'm excited to get started and get working. Thank you, Evie. And thank you, Carol, because uh, from the very beginning, we have been learning so much from what uh, from for this project from you and guiding us that has led us to do some changes even for Carroll County Family Connection. We have done a calendar for, of a food calendar, thanks to your suggestion. And this calendar is in our website, but it it, it allows us to know where the food is, but we have allowed, it allow, has allowed us to notice that sat, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday were the days that we did not, we do not have anything. Right now we have one uh, food availability on the third Saturday of the month. So if you know of anybody, any, any others that are in our community, please let us know so we can add it to the, to the, um, to the, to the calendar. But if you have any questions uh, for Carol, this is the time. Carol, you gave such a great presentation. Oh, okay. Melissa. And actually, there's some really I, good I did. It, Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. It took me just a second. I apologize. Um, so what I do is I work with the Georgia National Guard and service members and family members come to me. Um, I'm kind of become, I become that case manager. So um, is it going to be feasible that when I send someone to you um, or if I can connect with you guys and say, I mean, how would that work? Um, some of our service members, they they wait until like the day of eviction or I mean, I mean, it's just the nature of of life sometimes. And I'm trying to get them to learn don't wait, you know. Um, but sometimes we're under like a time crunch. So is that so Melissa, Something are you, you guys you're helping them, is. you're helping them navigate, but you don't provide any of the support. You're helping them identify. Support. Yes, ma'am. What, what I, I do is I, I, okay. I connect with resources across 13 counties in the Northwest Georgia area. Okay. Um, and I service all the service members that are in those mm -hmm. various counties with resources as what they need. If there's nothing military that I can help them with. Yes, ma'am. So what we would probably, let's, let's just kind of work through as we pilot it, let's think about that. But what we would yeah. probably want is that individual, you, you know, you're there, you're sitting there with the application. You're saying, Hey, we're going to fill this out. Let's get right. you into the cycle. Then okay. there's an info at EV right now is going to be our air traffic controller for that. There's mm -hmm. also in Gila, this is like that escalation that we talked about. There's also going to be moments where referring providers, referring agencies like yourself, your case manager out there referring needs to have a little bit of an escalation. Hey, I'm just kind of coming in the back door and saying, this is this client. I help them right. fill this out. Here's the situation. I've, you know, I verified that they really do need this help, that they right. really are below, a, you know, a level of income where this help is warranted. Right. Right. You know, agencies love to hear that because then they don't the vetting process is complete. Yeah, that's have to do that's my portion. Gotcha. So I yes, think I think it I think it's a really good challenge to us in the operations group to think about an escalation process for referring agencies, but at minimum get them into the cycle 
with the application. Yes, yeah, thanks Thank for that. You. I think that's a really good yes, like, little star that we'll do. And and we did add, we did add to the technology portion to be able to say, was this referred by another agency? I okay. think we have to think about that in the pilot phase. Can how can we flag was this referred by another agency? Because that is our we're ready to accept that, but we have to let let's test it during the pilot. So thank you. Good good input. Yes, thank you. Very Lydia. good. Thank you. Lydia, do you have a question? Um, she kind of answered it. <laughs> okay. But um, I see that everybody kind of doing the same thing, <laughs> which is awesome. But I was trying to figure out how do we get connected to that because like Gila said, we're the health equity navigator program. <laughs> so that's what we do. We go out to the 12 counties in district four and we connect them or we try to bridge that gap with the inequalities that's in those rural areas. Yeah. So definitely want to get connected to this and anybody else. Like I say, I put my email in the chat and like I said, we go to these counties and people will come up to us, you know, hey, can I get a computer class? You know, stuff like that. And if that's out there, we definitely want to, you know, direct them to that resource. I think this connector is great. <laughs> I'm excited. And, I, and, and Lydia, I love, like, I think this group could be all about making it bigger than Heard, Harrelson, and Carol. Yes. You yes. know, we had to start somewhere. We had a, a, you know, the agency that takes care of those three counties that she just sort of had a vision. Let's make it at least here. But if you can imagine, because, you know, also the people that we help are, are moving, they move, right. they cross right. county lines. Right. So you guys that are at the 12 county, like right. even you guys are at the bigger, um, dem bigger geographic mm -hmm. area, you start fu fueling your area saying, hey, this, these three counties are doing this. We need to grab onto that. And yes. just so you know, we're building the technology and the the process so it could go it it could go go it could keep on going it's it is going to be expandable mm -hmm. based on agency signing up to be a part of it so let's okay. work after, after we get through the initial pilot it is absolutely built with that in mind we just need visionaries in those <laughs> other counties to, keep, okay. to say yeah i need this i need like start start blowing smoke up the tree i need this too you know yeah. and, and yes. when it comes to bird harrelson and, or for our little counties for sure, your clients can come into our process, but it is limited to those the agency that are, that are available to provide that service. So we would love it to expand. All right, I'm with it. <laughs> That's certainly something we can um, talk to the county nurse managers for Carroll and Heard County and District 4. Um, those are the top two of our 12 counties in our district. Um, and so after Gila sends out the information, um, I will talk to Amy Nixon. She is our uh, nurse manager, our district nurse manager, um, and basically get a feel out of what we can resources we have specifically in those counties because they're very different demographically. Um, mm -hmm. Heard County has less than 12,000. Carroll County has over 120,000. Um, and so we certainly have resources available. Um, and I love the idea of this partnership of, of us being able to even refer, yes, we can do some services, but also if they come to us, to our nurse managers, to our WIC programs and whatnot. We can also funnel them to other resources as well. Excellent, thank you. And, and, when and many, I'm sorry, many of you are, you know, you also are par personally part of organizations that are looking to spend money to offer back to the community. Think about, especially in this pilot, the St. Margaret's, the THS, the, the they're, you know, they only have what they have to provide, but they're ready to, to expand that. So, I mean, when we, when we think about funding the organizations that are at the end of this application, we should, you know, all kind of come together. And I always say, put your money smart. If you've got money to invest, you know, if you're kind of donating money, put it where people are working smarter, not harder. And this is, I think, an example of that. And one of the things that I want to mention about the application that uh, I'm not going to say names or anything about the applications that they're out, out there, but there are like 15 or more questions in some of these applications. This one is less than that, much less than that. And it allows us to help those that are in need. Um, I wish I would have had this application um, already going yesterday. <laughs> like I'm talking like Megan from uh, St. Margaret's. But we really want this to be, uh, it is going to be a game changer in our community. 
connecting those people, the need, the help, the resources, it's going to be a game changer. And just once, it's so cumbersome when you are trying to get help and you cannot find the help because you have to apply to five, seven different places. Um, and they're only open on Tuesdays or Wednesday mornings or, you know, I'm trying to work and I had my kids and this is the only time I could do it. And now my time is over and I have to wait another week, you know, like it, no, to no harm, volunteer based organizations have to worry about getting it done. We're trying to out there worrying about the individuals trying to ha ask for the help, the crisis, for, you know, person in crisis. Uh, we want to thank Carol for all this information, amazing information. And we're looking forward to working with Evie uh, on the pilot stages of this project that is not ours, like Family Connection or uh, Carol uh, Community Foundation is ours, ours. Although if, if the agencies are not involved and the people are not involved, this uh, this project is nothing. So please do get involved and you're going to be able to see in the in the information that I will send you um, a QR code so you can actually register to get e-newsletters from the community foundation uh, because that is very important to do and Oops. anything else uh, before we start the introductions <laughs> we we go backwards here <laughs> well, thank you thank you all for thank having you, me Liz. I really appreciate it Thank, Thank you. you, Carol. We appreciate your comment. Thank you. Um, bye bye. bye, -bye. Um, if y'all have any kind of flyers or anything that you get out, please send them to Gila. I want to get that out of the way first. Um, send those to Gila. Um, and I will say some about connections. I've been part of Family Connections for about 15 years. Um, I've been on the board for several, the last several. Um, but this has been a dream for a long time. It was it was a dream that Vicky had, Vicky Cobra had forever. She ran Connect Family Connections forever. Um, this was always her dream to have one hub, get everything everybody needs. Um, I will say I was shocked not to see some <clears throat> of our agencies already on that confirmed list, but I'm sure it will happen. So um, I was starting to introduce myself. I'm Lee Washington. I am the program manager for juvenile justice here in Carroll County. And right now we've got probably 120 something kids under our caseload um, and school's back in. So we're about to get busier. Um, we always do when school comes back in. So here we go. I am going to, instead of trying to chase everybody's face around my little squares, my computer, I'm going to hit the chat and go from there. So once I call your name, please unmute yourself. Tell us who you are and what's going on with, all, with your organization. Let me go back up to the top. Don't want to start in the middle. Mr. Thomason, please introduce yourself. Go right ahead. Good morning. I'm uh, Travis Thomason. I'm the new director of student engagement from Carrollton City School, uh, formerly the principal of Carrollton Junior High School, and this is my first year in the district role. All right. Next, we have Kelly Law with Carrollton City Schools. Hey there, good morning, everyone. Um, I would turn my camera on, but um, I'm, Lee, I'm still having some technical difficulties. <laughs> I get it, I get um, it. Just like that meeting the other day. But anyway, good morning, everyone. And um, I'm one of the two social workers at Carrollton City Schools, and I'm also the McKinney Vento or Homeless Liaison, but at Carrollton, we call it the Families and Trans Transition Coordinator. And so I work with our families who are experiencing homelessness. Um, that would be the ones living in motels, hotels, shelters, uh, doubled up living with other families due to various reasons, uh, economic hardship, you know, uh, fire, just different things. Um, I'm very excited about the connector. That is something I've been saying for years that I think we need in um, Carrollton, Carroll County. So I'm really looking forward to this. Hey, thank you, Kelly. Melissa Prigmore, I don't want to mess your name up. Oh, you're okay. It happens all the time. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it does. And as it's spelled just like it's you say, just like it's spelled. It's so funny. Um, good morning. My name is Melissa Prigmore, and I um I'm so glad we're back online. I have missed everybody over the summer. <laughs> um, and I was actually out of pocket a little bit of the last part of last year. Um, I work with the Georgia National Guard. I'm a soldier and family readiness specialist. And basically what I do is I serve 
uh, 13 counties in the Northwest Georgia, Carroll being one of them, Harrelson being one of them. Um, Heard is not. Basically, I go Carroll and Harrelson and then West and North um, over to Douglas County. What kind of borders you guys there at Carroll and Douglas? Uh, and I, I basically on this side of things, I am a family assistance resource person. Uh, and what I did, I did some quick uh, research while Miss Carroll was talking. Um, in Carroll County alone, in the cities of Carroll County alone, you guys have 635 Georgia National Guard members and families uh, that are hidden hidden amongst you guys. And so what we have coming up right now, we just finished our uh, back to school brigade and we gave out school supplies to the different armories and service members and stuff. Uh, but specifically for Mr. Thomaston and Ms. Law and uh, Ms. Brittany Berry, you guys are working with the schools. Um, we are gearing up for a major mobilization. And I can't say that publicly. Uh, we do have uh, several thousand going overseas. And that, so just just so you, I, I would love to connect with the social workers and the city and, co and county schools, uh, Mr. Thomaston as the, the student engagement person. Um, what we find with, with these students, and you guys will probably realize that, is that they are, um, they're not immersed in the military community. So when their mom or dad deploys somewhere, um, it's major for them because they don't have the same level of support as you would if you were in a military, you know, around a military post with more, more kids that are like you, they'll find themselves being the only kid in the class whose mom and dad are gone. Um, so I, when I say major, it's major. Um, uh, that, and so the tempo, you'll see the tempo in October start to gear up. October, November around Thanksgiving is training for the, for the service members. Uh, then they'll be on leave through December 22nd. And as of January 1, we have probably about 3,500 across the state rolling out. Um, and so it's a major hit at one time, uh, going to different places. And so I just want to put that on your radar and that's what's going to be my focus. And so this connect, um, I love what, what Ms. Dotson was, what they're doing down there. Uh, I hope to be able to have a space in that building so that some of the family members and stuff can come um, and, and definitely use that resource center. But just stick that on your radar and I'll be talking about that monthly as we go through. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you. And I just want to mention something. Connecting, we have been doing it at the collaborative, uh, but at that resources uh, hub that, or whatever, how we are going to call it. <laughs> that is what we are going to be doing more. But I've been doing that with Miss Melissa because when I needed help, she provided me with a bunch of information <laughs> that I needed. So to provide to, to people that we serve. So thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Miss Brittany Bear, you're next on my list. Good morning, everyone. I am Brittany Berry, the other school social worker at Carrollton City Schools and I focus more on our non-homeless population in our foster care youth. And I'm so excited about the connector. I think it's going to be amazing. It's like a one-stop shop for everything to connect our families to resources. Kimberly, with Three Rivers, I don't miss your last name. Hello, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Kim Kildani with Three Rivers Transit. We do the Carroll Connection buses. Um, yeah, so we'll we'll do the public transit up there, and uh, I just look forward to getting to know you guys more. Thank you for joining us, um, Stacy, with the health department. You didn't want to try that last name. I'm not trying. <laughs> <laughs> Cecilia throws people. Up. It's Cassiopo, although I did get married, and so it is about to change to Bagley. Much easier to pronounce, right? Yeah. Um, I'm with the District 4 Department of Public Health. I'm the Chronic Disease Prevention Program Manager for the district. I also am the manager for the Georgia Tobacco Use Prevention Program. And what I'm doing in schools right now is going in and educating kids on the dangers of smoking and vaping. Um, I don't have an in with Carroll County Schools yet. So if anyone in Carrollton wants to hit me up um, or put their email in the chat, I will them 
successfully. And we can talk about uh, coming into the school and talking to the teachers about the dangers of smoking and vaping, also hidden vapes and um, the ways you can modify things to hide a vape, um, like Sharpies and um, asthma inhalers. It's really just oh, terrible. Oh yeah, I mean, it's not. And they actually sell clothes and items that hide vapes in them. Um, and so I like to educate our teachers and our resource officers on what this looks like. Um, and so the dangers of smoking and vaping um, for kids and youth, we know it hijacks their brain, we know it rewires their um, brain, the nicotine does, and it's super dangerous. So if you guys um, are interested, hit me up. Otherwise, I'll send letters out to all of our um, schools in Carroll County um, to let them know this is a free service we offer. Um, we're also doing um, in Upton Lee Middle School, um, their alternative to suspension program. I'm actually running in their middle school. Um, so if the kids are caught vaping, we don't want a punitive approach to this. Punishing them doesn't work. Um, and so we are actually doing a non-punitive alternative to suspension program that I will be doing personally with the students caught vaping. Um, so it's free. We want to be able to support you guys however we can. Um, and like I said, this connection um, group is, we're excited about the connector. I love the idea and the resources available. Um, and so I will, like I said, get with our nurse managers, get with our other people and see what we can do to one, provide services, but also connect in to the resources available. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Linda Blanchard. Hi, I'm Linda Blanchard with Carroll County Juvenile Court. I am the Children Native Service Coordinator. I work with the truancies and the ungovernables that come through the court system. <clears throat> she about to get busy too, it schools back in. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie Tullis. If I can get my camera, there it is. Good morning, everyone. I'm Stephanie Tullis, and I work with the Carrolls and Housing Authority's Abstinence Education Program. As the coordinator, the center has been um, closed for about two and a half months. So we plan to reopen the center um, for students ages 10 to 19 come Tuesday, September the 5th. The program is free and it runs um, during school, after the school day uh, from 3.30 to 6, pick up and drop offs are available as well as in the summer. Um, I'm also founder and executive director of Cultivating You Inc, a self-development program using literacy initiatives for teens 14 and 19. Um, we'll be kicking off our um, program for the school year as well. Um, it's $45 to meet the second Saturday of every month from September until May, and the flyers are with GILA. Limited scholarships are available for that. Thank you, ma'am. It's McClendon. She's with Good the county. Good morning, school. everybody. There we go. Good morning. I'm Ola McClendon uh, with Carroll County Schools, parent uh, family engagement liaison going on the second year. Uh, getting a lot of information, get referrals from counselors, everybody, you know, a lot of people at the school. So I'm excited about this, uh, this forum and learning a lot. So thank you all. We're glad to have you. Um, Ms. Buckner. Hi, my name is Amanda Buckner. I'm with the Georgia Vocational Rehabilitation Program. We exist as a state and federally funded program that helps people with disabilities prepare for, obtain, and maintain employment. Um, so if you have anybody that you want to refer, I put the link to our referral uh, portal in the chat with my uh, contact information. Um, but you send them to the online referral, and when a uh, referral comes through, uh, if it gets assigned to me, I follow up with them and make an appointment for them to come into my office and sign paperwork. And I actually try to put them in the system that day. So they leave my office in application status and a clock starts for me to work toward making them eligible for services uh, by getting the appropriate documentation in place to verify that they have a permanent disability that impacts their ability to work and they can benefit from my services. Then we work together to figure out what services they need on their work plan, put that in place and get services started um, and work toward eventually showing that they went to work as a result of the services provided. Um, and I'm happy to report that this past year, we've closed 44 cases successfully. 
by the end of our performance year, and that's a huge number, um, considering that we have to follow them for 90 days before we close their case. Um, but um, you may see some information out about public hearings coming up in the fall. Um, some changes are going to be made to how we fund post-secondary training. And so if you have any interest in commenting on those um, possible changes, be looking out for uh, notices of public hearings coming in the fall. But those changes are expected to take place probably by um, January or for the spring uh, semester for those attending school that are being supported by um, GVRA. Um, as far as any changes in our office, I think we're kind of settling into a routine with the staff we have. We are trying to hire some new folks, um, but it's hard to recruit people to come to Carrollton for some reason. <laughs> um, so uh, nonetheless, um, I'm here to help if you have anybody that is looking for work and has barriers to employment because of a disability, uh, we are the right place to send them. We can assist with assessing their disability, how it impacts their ability to work, and what type of vocational goal would be appropriate for them in light of the disability that they're dealing with. Um, and then we can put services in place that will support them in overcoming those barriers. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to take them in the chat or now. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Randy, you're up with CMHA. Hey, I'm Brandy. Um, I have been interning at CMHA throughout the summer doing some case management and assisting in peer support. Um, we've got mobilized recovery on September 20th at the AMP coming up. Um, if you would like to have a free vendor table, please let us know. I believe Gila has the um, flyer and vendor form for those two things. Um, it's going to be an awesome event. I uh, hope everybody can come out and join us. There'll be free food, lots of speakers. The Mobilized Recovery Bus will be there. There's a reggae band that's going to be there. Um, and I really hope everybody can come out. Um, also, we have added several new support groups uh, that are being held here. Um, and I believe Gila also has the flyer for that. Um, mm -hmm. So um, if you know of anybody who needs those support group services, just send them our way. Thanks for having me. Thank you, ma'am. Katie Brinkley. Good morning. My name is Katie Brinkley. I am the Outreach and Admissions Counselor for Turner Job Corps. Um, if you don't know where that is, that's in Albany, Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, we just recently started outreaching in Carrollton and the surrounding areas. Um, so if you haven't heard of us, welcome. <laughs> um, we are new to this area, um, but I'm excited to start connecting in this area for Job Corps. Thank you, Katie. I've sent kids there over the years. Uh, Ms. Guyton. Good morning. I am Christy Guyton with the Goodwill Car uh, Career Center in Carrollton. We are in the Goodwill uh, store right in the back, and I am one of the career specialists there. Thank you, ma'am. Miss Phyllis? Phyllis Head with Get Healthy, Live Well at Tanner Health System. We have a full roster through the end of the year of free classes to help people with diabetes prevention, diabetes self-management, um, chronic disease self-management, smoking cessation, uh, food as medicine for diabetics, for people with hypertension. Um, all of those classes we offer free to the public. Uh, they just have to sign up and we will deal with them. We have some food available for some of our clients that come to the food and, uh, as medicine uh, programs that need specific food for for specific conditions. Um, so we're we're here and at your disposal. I would love to have anybody come in for classes um, or have you send anybody our way. Uh, thank you very much. Ma'am. Ms. Jessica Simmers. Good morning, everyone. Um, I am Jessica Simerson. I'm the Career Services Specialist with Adult Education at West Georgia Technical College. Um, I am responsible for assisting our students who are working towards their GED or if they are in our ESL classes, helping them determine what their next goal is beyond reaching that, what they're here for currently. So I'm assisting them with job preparation, with resumes, with 
getting ready for college, whatever it is that their next goal is beyond that. Um, we do have three classes for both GED students and ESL students on all of our campuses. Um, and I'm responsible for all five of our campuses. So I do travel to all of our locations and help our students at all of our areas. Um, but we've got a lot of exciting things coming up for our students, um, opportunities for them to continue their education while they're in our program. So while they're working towards their GED, they can earn a certificate. Um, especially we have grant funding we've just received for childcare. So hopefully getting some people <laughs> out into the workforce to help in and a very needed areas right now. So we've mm -hmm. got some great opportunities um, for students to start this month in classes or to also start in January. So if you know someone who's interested in working in childcare and they don't have their GED, they can go ahead and start classes with us now. And then in January, we can go ahead and move them in if they've achieved a certain goal and a certain level. Um, and that is fully funded through this grant that's being offered. So they will earn the college certificate. They will also be CPR certified as a part of that program. So we've got some really awesome opportunities for our students. Thank you, ma'am. Mary Sale. Uh, it's Mary Sale, WIOA coordinator at West Georgia Technical College. Um, we um, assist students with government funding uh, to help them uh, with their educational needs. We help with tuition, books, fees, any type of expenses that are associated with their training program. So I'm on the adult side at West Georgia Tech. So anyone that is 18 years of age or older and attending a program at West Georgia Tech, um, you know, I would be the person to contact. Thank you. I think that's, no, Miss Linda Robles. Great day, uh, Queens and Kings. Um, it is, uh, it's Linda Robles, no worries. It's always pronounced Robles or anything other than what it is. No worries there. Um, I am with uh, It Takes a Village Family Services. It is a faith-based uh, nonprofit. The organization itself will resume January 2024 as I am taking a break right now. Uh, we'll have meetings weekly uh, for, and there'll be more information to come um, going forward. And the focus is on forgiveness and forgiveness of self and others so that the family can move forward successfully while improving spiritual heart health. Um, the single parent ministry also collaborates with Church Without Walls and the general public, of course. But um, the collaboration is mainly with the clothing closet and the food pantry so that we can address those deficiencies in our community. Uh, lastly, we focus on educating men on becoming legitimized so that they can establish legal rights and visitation with their children that have been born out of wedlock. I do um, encourage child support. Um, so that actually what child support is encouraged for accountability purposes. It protects everybody in the family. Um, you can see me in the community with various groups, the Carrollton Kiwanis Club, South Wires Project Give, Girl Scouts USA, ATL, Carrollton, and of course, Church Without Walls Outreach. And uh, if you need me for anything, you can always find me uh, in the community or you can look for me on this group here under single parents. Yes, yeah, single parents uh, at gmail.com. Thank you, Linda. Okay. And we have Ms. Wild, please, ma'am. Hey guys, how are you? Thanks for letting me um, join in. I work for Carrollton City, but um, my role in this committee is um, the director of first readers of Carroll County. And so any way that we can get connections with your families who have a physical residence in, in our area um, to register their children birth to five years old for a book a month, um, yeah, every year of their, their life, we'd love to we'd love to connect with you. And just as a reminder, uh, I have put uh, links to our websites and make sure that we help first readers because that is part of our annual plan. Remember uh, that it is it is essential that we all collaborate on this. We need more families enrolling into first readers because it helps their mental health and their bonding between their parents. And I know that we are running lately, so... Um, I don't want to say anything, but I just want to I, I, I just want to ask something September or October in person. I think I'm going for October. 
October. October. October. Mm -hmm. Okay. October it is. So October the 17th, I'll find the, the place. And in October, we are going to have someone from the, um, oh my goodness, I already forgot, the um, uh, Carroll County Habitat for Humanity, West Georgia Habitat for Humanity uh, is going to be presenting. But remember that September is Suicide Prevention Month. October, we are going to have the walk as well. We all need to collaborate together. If we see something on social media that needs to be shared, share it. And that's one part of what our collaboration is, not just social media, but showing up. Thank you. Thank y'all. Thanks, everybody. I think connection will be great. Our next meeting will be September the 19th. Same place, same time. We'll see y'all there. Good to see everybody. Welcome back. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, Thank you guys. You.